Hey, what's going on, everybody? Obstacles to opportunity. We are live here. Everyone hates Tesla. <laughs> and I don't know why, I, I, why they keep on hating. But we're going to go ahead and jump into this video. We're going to review this video and have some talking points about Tesla, as we always do. And this is the biggest shock in 2024. Sandy Monroe on Tesla's big mistake. Now, he doesn't necessarily talk about Tesla's big mistake. And shout out to Tesla tomorrow. We're going to utilize this footage, fair use, and we're going to move into what they're talking about. So Sandy Monroe, for you guys don't know, it's a big engineer. He actually does a lot of consulting for OEMs. And so he does legacy manufacturers. He actually does a lot of consultations. He has his own firm and he breaks down these cars to their nuts and bolts, to their small itemized pieces. And if you see those big books in the background, those books are itemized pieces for the cars. So he actually figures out the manufacturing process and actually what these companies are paying for the car in its whole entirety. And that's a lot of pieces, guys. So they do a lot of work. And so we're going to move into this and see what Sandy Monroe was saying. And he's a big supporter of Tesla, not just because Tesla is Tesla, but because they're really good at what they do. Let's get it. Tesla is rolling in dough. I don't know where they hide it or how they do what they do, but I can tell you right now, I work for several different big automotive companies in Europe, in Japan, and here in the United States. And I can tell you what, nobody can do that. Nobody, absolutely nobody, nobody. 600 bucks, remember I told you a second ago, $600 is what you pay for marketing of a car and they don't have to do it. So, so he's talking about Tesla. They have a low marketing budget. A lot of companies are spending $600 per car to market their car. He's saying that they don't have to do it. They don't spend much money on advertisement, guys. And a lot of capital in any company goes towards it and its marketing. So when you look at gross margins for a normal car, you basically say, I started with, uh, let's say somebody out there has got 30%, which they don't, 30% <clears throat> margin. You'd whack it and you'd wind up at the end of the day with about three or 4% net profit. How much does Tesla make in net profit? Take a wild guess. If you Now he's talking about OEMs. They, don't, they got about net profit on their margins. It's around 4%. Now, if you think Tesla is smaller or equivalent of that, equivalent than that, then you have a problem. But let's continue. You're less than 20%. You're a fool. You don't know what you're talking about. That's the starting point. Now you go on top of it. So when I said that Tesla... So he's saying, and this is Sandy Monroe, he breaks down these cars. He knows the prices. Somebody might say, oh, he's a liar. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But if you're below 20% on that net profit, then you're mistaken. But of course, when we look at the sheets and the financials, it does come out to be double of what OEMs actually make. So it's still around 10, 8%. But net, net, Sandy Monroe is saying it's way more than that, guys. And now if you add on other things and other services, it's way more. But let's continue. Tesla could cut their profits in half and still make more money than any car company on the planet. I am not kidding you. We truly do know what things cost. And a lot of people will <clears throat> essentially talk based off of a yeah. napkin. Yes. Um, I, I'm going to highlight that before Sandy goes at you guys. And so they actually know, once again, look at that binder behind them. They actually know how much things cost. So they're not spec speculating and they're not talking off of a back of a napkin or let me even be more professional, an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. They've actually broken the car down. Other people aren't breaking the car down and figuring out what's going on. They're not on the ground. This is why I said, guys, it's good to have that advantage of being the observant investor versus the analytical investor who just looks at things on the aftermath, only on a spreadsheet. I'm not saying don't look at spreadsheets, right? But I am saying that these are specialists, people who are on the ground, breaking down a car item for item. In that book, everything is there as far as prices are concerned, and they actually know how much it costs. But a lot of people are just talking out their rear end and assuming that they know something. Um, anybody And you guys will even see the comment section. People are gonna say, it's gonna sink. It's gonna lose, it's gonna fail. The company has been operating for 13 years of people saying that it was gonna fail. It's more than a decade. When do they have to come to reckoning? 
about the nonsense they're speaking. And we're going to get into it a little bit. The financial media is also going to be speaking nonsense about Tesla. Anybody who's ever seen a pet detective, uh, I, I wanted to do it all by myself when he started talking about talking through your and he, yeah, but they won't let me do that here. Um, apparently it's degrading and the woke people will get all upset and stuff like that. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do the talking through my thing. But if you go to Jim Carrey, who's, you know, kind of like a Hollywood guy, and you go to Pet Detective and you go hit and see him, he talks through his And that is precisely what I'm getting when I see people, some, <laughs> the last one, I could not delete the email fast enough. <sighs> I, I, I can't believe that people can be so incredible. Helen Hansel was able to win any competition she stupid, and they're the ones who are telling the market what to do. What are you kidding me? Are you joking? So definitely, right? The people who are speaking about Tesla as a company don't even understand the technology. They don't understand the manufacturing. They don't understand itemized pieces of the car in particular in detail like these guys understand these guys have never been in any factory ever let alone understand what's going on at tesla i mean the most you see reporters inside of actual business of operation is re recently since nvidia has done its crazy amount of growth and ai and the boost and whatever now reporters are like let's go to the headquarters and see what they actually do <laughs> but that's it right and they're just going to the headquarters they're not combing through the details they don't even understand what's going on themselves they're just riding the wave but yes a lot of people even in the comment section you'll see them everybody loves to hate tesla they're going to talk out their booty cheeks this is the best move that tesla could possibly make they will eliminate annihilate their competition because their cars are cheaper than anybody else can make them and now they're cheaper than that how is anybody going to be able to compete so here's the thing, anytime you've got a truck, you're gonna pay more money and there's way more profit in it. If you don't think for a second that, uh, that Ford's move to uh, electrify the F-150 wasn't the most brilliant move by any automotive company apart from Tesla, <clears throat> any company in, uh, in the world, you're out of your mind. Ford made a genius move with the F-150, genius. And, um, and I can tell you, I agree. F-150 is pretty popular. So if Ford gets out of its own way and kind of start to be in this industry as far as EV, then I think they could do good for themselves because F-150 is just loved by Americans, right? The Cybertruck is amazing, amazing engineering, regardless of how you feel, how it looks. It's amazing engineering, but people have this nostalgia and this strong relationship with the F-150 tell you for sure uh, that uh, that they are moving faster on electrification than any of the other OEMs that we know of. None of them are coming out as fast with as many different versions as they possibly can. This, these guys are, are they're, they're survivor. Tesla, Tesla will clobber everybody except for the Chinese. The only reason there is that um, even though they've reduced their costs and whatnot, there is a, a stigma that was created by our own <clears throat> government. Um, and uh, now Americans are losing favor in the eyes of other parts of the world, China being the, the one in particular. So they're, they're probably not gonna be able to eclipse them. But, but remember, Tesla is running at a 40 second station, uh, uh, station time. That is... Yeah, now let's look at that 40-second station time. But to go with Sandy Monroe, BYD is a great competitor. And the market is there, man. The future is there. So if BYD does great and Tesla does great, it's still room, right? Tesla doesn't necessarily need to be number one. Being number two is good. But there's a lot of demand to go around. And there's massive amounts of other products and services that Tesla also sells on top of just a car. So... Let's look at this time. He's talking about 40 second station time. Now I'm gonna let him continue so you can know what other competition is doing. And remember that the manufacturing process for a car is not easy. It is not simple, guys. It is complex. It is phenomenal. Nobody in the US, none that I know of. 
<clears throat> everybody goes to about 60 and that's about it. They're doing 40 seconds. Every 40 seconds, another car is coming off the line. Nobody's got that. I believe that, I believe that that's why they're talking to Indonesia. I was kind of hoping that they'd go to China, uh, sorry, Canada, but, uh, but Indonesia makes a lot of sense as well. They'll be able to dump into the rest of uh, the, uh, the uh, Asian, Asian world, as it were. It'll be a little, exp a little less expensive there. Just a few years back. And I know that they're also talking to Thailand. Now let's go back before we move forward in this video. And he's talking about that 40 seconds, right? Off the line, 40 seconds, Tesla is killing it when it comes down to how many cars are coming off the line. Remember, the manufacturing is something not to be messed with. It is an unmatched. Even but even great engineers like German or Germany, excuse me, in Japan have said that Tesla and the Model 3 specifically from Toyota. <clears throat> that the Model 3 is a work of art. It's a masterpiece, all right? And 46 seconds to assemble a car. A new car body rolls off, body in white workstation, GAC Motors factory every 46 seconds, thanks to ABB's innovative body in white robotic automation solution. And we're ahead of that. <clears throat> As I said again, the cutting edge technology at Tesla is all in the manufacturing, all right? unmatched now let's allow the guy to move into the next segment <clears throat> back elon musk was in a pile of debt and he went under in a bid to buy twitter now x and while it seemed like a strategic move at the time things weren't exactly looking all sunshine and rainbows for how to pay it all back and apparently things just got even bumpier but that's not even the problem right because now let me pause it right there because this is the trend and a lot of things that Elon does, that's a trend, right? PayPal, same. Tesla, the same. SpaceX, the same. Each business had its issues. Looking like it was on the brink of collapse. Bankruptcy. Going to be destroyed. And if you bet in Elon, or if you bet against him, you're probably going to lose. He's changed the platform X to make it more effective and efficient. <clears throat> They're finally breaking even. And so where it goes from here is up to Elon. But Tesla not too long ago and SpaceX not too long ago was two seconds. I think Elon actually said a couple of hours from shutting down. Both of them. So it, 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 once again, all companies actually have been through this. Apple had its issues. And so we see an issue and we're like, oh, it's over. It's not really over, guys. You're getting ahead of yourself. When the door is shut, when the door is shut, now you can say it's over. It becomes alarming is that Tesla investors who've been banking on the automaker's long-term success may have to take the fall for it. Time we'll take a look at Tesla, which mm -hmm. is at 176. The high over 52 weeks was basically just under $300, it was yeah. 299. And see, once again, guys, these people they only track shit for a week, for a couple of weeks, for a quarter, for a year to date, year to year. It's all this nonsense, all these markers, all this play play. They're playing a different game, okay? They're talking to a different people. I believe that. When you guys look at a layout like this and you listen to people like this, this is for the professionals. This is for people who manage accounts, right? They manage institutional money. They manage pension funds. But this is not for the retail investor. This information is not for the retail investor. You see, they got all these computers. That's for day traders, right? Quarter traders, monthly traders. Like, that's who that's for, right? So people who manage a portfolio and have to perform every quarter and get annual reviews and nonsense like this. So if you're in that game, then watch this. It's useful somehow. But if you're not and you're in for the long term on any blue chip stock, then this is not where you want to go. You want to go where people are going to provide you that insider information. They're going to provide you with the nuts and bolts of what it takes to build a solid company. See, these guys will just figure it out later on when the price is so low 
and the demand is so high and then it comes across their sheet, but they don't get it and they don't understand why. Hence why a lot of media companies are now going in NVIDIA like, what, what are you guys doing? What's the process? Can we see the headquarters? Can we figure out what is a chip? How does it work? Now they're on it, but they're not on it until the sheet comes across that says we've killed it in 2023. Shout outs to NVIDIA. 50% margins, right? But they don't no, they weren't when the, they weren't with Nvidia shooting in the gym. So they don't know how they got there, why they got there. They don't know who, what, when, why, where, and how. All they know is the company. And change. And when you say uh, where it was hot and you know, Nvidia, it, you know, are EVs hot anymore? You know, the trend of EVs coupled with intense um, competition mm -hmm. for Tesla. What do you think here? Well, because this name, let me see, year to date down 28%. Down 28% after being up 100% last year, but still lagging because uh, it never really made those all time highs, making back those losses from 2022. So with, with Tesla. And, and you see how they talk uh, year to date, year to year, since this point at the 300 moving forward, haven't made it high since this time. Like, let's go to the charts, man. Let's just take a second from these guys who are talking about trends. We're talking about stocks. We're talking about how do they have a competitive edge. We're talking about their products and services. They're talking about what's a trend. See, we talk two different languages, man. And if you look at it for the last five years, right, the company is at 868. If you were prior to five years, shoot, max, if you were almost, let's just argue, 10, 13 years ago, you guys are looking at 13,788. But let's just go five years, right? That's a that's a small amount of time, guys. And, and there's a return of 868. Five years ago, we're talking around $14 per stock. Now we're talking 177. But they're mesmerized because at one point in November 2021, it was at 400. And so they mark everything from that, or they mark everything from here, year to date. Oh, year to date is down 30%. Buying opportunity for people like me. For the year, it's only up 2%. Oh my gosh, it's underperforming. But once you take it back a little bit more, five years, that's a crazy return. A lot of companies never do that. We're talking about a company right now, even at this lower price, is 557 billion in market cap value and they still have a lot of things coming up into the future right they're starting to actually see capital come from the energy department but nobody cares it's okay you don't need to care it's okay you don't need to understand we want them to be at this level of ignorance we want them to be in the dark because that creates the opportunity for observant investors to invest in said company whether it's any company right not just Tesla, but any company to understand what's going on before Wall Street does. Because once again, she's looking for trends. I'm looking for a business. I'm looking for a great business. Tesla, it's getting looked at more like a car company. And when you think car companies, you think Ford, GM, these have been boring stocks that have kind of been stagnant. The real investor, the people that follow Elon Musk, they know him as a visionary and look at the technology behind it and right. traded it like an AI play. That story has changed because they haven't been delivering. They haven't had the next big thing for Tesla. And then people are concerned. Is Elon Musk worried about too many other things? Is he worried about X? Is he worried about the boring company? Is he worried about space? Um, you know, I would never bet against Elon Musk. But right now, Tesla has been. And it's not about. Elon Musk so much. These guys make it about Elon. I would never bet against a great company, Tesla, period. We still have kick-ass people at Tesla. I mean, who's in charge of building out factories and operating them? I can't remember the gentleman's name right now, but that guy's kick-ass. He really does a great job, you know? He was in China, Shanghai. Like, he killed it. And so we brought him even to Austin, Texas to add the same value when we were scaling Austin's factory, Giga Factory. And so it's the company. I mean, Elon can be great and he could be a visionary, but if he doesn't have key personnel like that making moves, we have a problem. I mean, Elon found the individual people and created OpenAI, which you guys know as ChatGPT.
He created the team. So it's about the teams he creates, not so much only his vision. Like he doesn't sleep and have visions and hallucinate. And that's why people are like, I'm going to invest in Tesla because Elon hallucinates and he sees vision. No. He doesn't only see a vision. He builds out a team that sees the vision and carries on that legacy, carries on that deed. So that's what it's about. But if you listen to these guys while you're eating your fruit roll-ups or you listen to these guys while you're scrambling your eggs with a newspaper and a suit thinking that you're doing something, then you're going to be lost. You're going to be lost. All right. And so other people can say, well, you know, Tesla isn't doing this one and and it isn't doing that, and it isn't doing that, but Tesla is doing great for herself. So we have to really think about this. Let's continue to move on. You know, it's been missing the ball. It's been dropping the ball, and right. shareholders are just, you know, they're getting out, and they're waiting to see when the next opportunity would be to buy, and it, it just hasn't arisen in the last few So they're getting out. They're getting in the market, but historically, truthfully, people don't succeed. You're telling me about a bunch, what a bunch of people are doing in the market, getting in and getting out, but they're failing. They're failures. Why would you give me the game plan of a failure? Even the people who are managers and analysis and all this other stuff, CNN, stock market contributors, like you look up their scores and they're, and they're losers. Like they're always wrong. <laughs> They're not getting a dub. They're not figuring things out. But we're sitting up here listening to these guys talking about, oh, he said get in and get out. And he said that nobody sees the EV and his buy and sell rating and his hold position, da-da-da-da-da. And as you look back, it's nothing but failures. As you look back, none of them are outperforming the market. None of them are outperforming just the index. So why are we listening to him at all? Because that's what industry does. And we do something different. But that, that's good for them. I'm not mad at them. I don't want them to change their format. I want them to continue to go the direction they're going. And where we come in is we come in the between. We take companies from after they IPO. We purchase them at a price prior to everybody realizing their potential. Right? We're buying NVIDIA prior to everybody caught up in the hype. The CEO was the man that he was. But even more important than the CEO was the people who worked at NVIDIA and the work that they put in. So you don't have to see the AI play. There's people in the streets that see the AI play. Like you're caught up in a cool chat module, like almost Google 2.0. And you're ignoring a robot that's driving through the downtown streets of Austin, making things happen in the real world. So this is what I'm saying. Let other people be ignorant. Let them not see the vision. Let them not even see, damn, a vision, the reality. Normies are like, well, he ain't deliver FSD. Like, yo, your child has not even learned how to drive yet. So <laughs> you act like FSD has been under the development longer than your child has been trying to figure out how to drive. That's not the case. So it's going to take time. Let's continue. A few months. Yeah, today's Thursday. Week to date, Tesla's down almost 13%. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot. Week to date. You see what they're talking about? <clears throat> you can do that with any stock, bro. Week to date. Month to month. Year to date. Year to year. Since last November this day. Like, you pick the date that fits the narrative in which you're trying to show a decline. Let me pick a date which shows the increase. Let me pick five years ago. 868%. How about that? That's better than all you guys on all of your portfolios and all the companies that you think you manage because you think you could play the market. But I guess let's have a conversation instead about a week to date. What next? 24 hours to date? 72 hours to date? Week to date? Date to date? Like, what are you talking about? Bought. It, it uh, that's a lot. That's a big move, particularly when the S P is at new highs. Mm -hmm. so Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter came with a lot of noise, not only because the Tesla CEO will have to manage two large companies, but will also have the financial consequences that come with it. 
And now banks that were supposed to be secretly helping out are throwing their hands up and walking away. So here's the lowdown. So is the lowdown. Shout out to him, but thanks, man. I don't really try to take investment advice from the lowdown. The lowdown, the lowdown, dirty shame. What? what the hell? This is a portfolio, brother. What solid information? Do you have nope. it? Nope. Then shut up. The lowdown. What are we talking about? Sounds like a situation where we're talking about someone's sexual escapades. Talking about on the lowdown. Like, are we talking about stocks or are we talking about? On the lowdown, lenders aren't trying to, like, bro, what? <laughs> Those are two different vehicles. The money that came in for a private company like X is entirely different, right? And as long as the financials are looking way better than they were in the past, which they are, they'll be able to renegotiate secured loans and figure out the debt service and figure things out especially with him and pointing someone else. And so it's very different. People invested in it. He didn't invest it all by itself, meaning X, when he acquired it when they were losing $5 million a day. All right? All the crazy red tape, all the terrible financial habits that the company had previously are now deleted. It's more effective and it's more efficient. And everything has been corrected. So at this point, if you go back to a bank and you show them the spreadsheet now, they're going to say, wow, or those same private lenders or investors. So you can get a different perspective on the company now versus when it was underperforming like that. So, man, shout outs to it. I know everyone loves to hate Tesla. Um, it would have been nice if we could have doubled down on the factories, right? The manufacturing the floor and what they have to offer. But we had to shoot in the direction of blaming Twitter and then start marking the stock market from year to date, week to date, month to date, year to year, year over year. All right. Long term investor, we're talking about something different. We're talking about something great. We're talking about a company that's great. Not even riding the dillies of Elon Musk. I'm talking about the company Tesla. And a lot of people can't understand the difference between Tesla and between Elon. Elon is amazing. Elon has done a great amount of things, especially when it comes to creating companies that are worth a lot. He's got $300 billion from SpaceX, and it's private companies, let alone if it ever IPO'd upon a day, right? Starlink, he's moving goddamn internet service for countries across the world. He could turn on the internet in one part of the country, turn off the internet in another country. Like, that's crazy. That's outlandish, right? <laughs> More satellites in the sky. Like, SpaceX is ridiculous. Tesla is ridiculous. When you start looking at all these other different type of avenues, which I spoke about in the domination of Tesla. So it's Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. I'm talking about Tesla. I'm going to the experts who break down the car and looking at the nuts and bolts, itemizing each specific item and comparing it to the other OMEs that they're actually also assisting in consulting and saying like, wow, this company stands out. I'm listening to Toyota say that this company in the Model X or Model 3 being a miracle, right? A masterpiece, or a work of art, innovation pushed to its limits. Not me, and Elon Musk. Tesla's a great company. Go read the book from good to great, and you'll see the same element. And every company had to deal with the same problems. Apple, didn't they kick Steve Jobs out of the company? Because normies thought that they knew more than Steve Jobs also? They kicked Elon. It is no wonder why they have problems with Elon. At least he's still in the company. Because when it came to Apple, you guys kicked that man out of this company. And then you had to compete with him. And he started whipping your monkey up. He created Pixar. He created other ventures that started to compete with Apple. And when they brought him back to Apple, then the company started to perform again. So guys, I hope history teaches you a lesson. But if it doesn't, we'll just count it as our blessings.
Shout out to everybody. Thanks for watching another episode of Everyone Loves to Hate Tesla. I know you guys do. And if you continue to hate on Tesla, I don't care. But if you're here to invest in Tesla in the long way, on the long run, then give me a... Give me a hell yeah! What? What?